All right, here for match two against C is for cookie. And C is for cookie usually plays elves. That's sort of the deck that they're known for. And finally, I have an opening hand that I can keep. Um, it's a little bit sketchy. But I think I'm willing to keep it, especially on the play. I can just sort of cycle one of these brainstorms and then leave up Syncopate on the following turn. So I'll give this a go. I think enough or not enough people play brainstorm because they just don't want to cycle it aggressively they don't want to lock themselves quote unquote but this is basically like a cycler you would have drawn those cards anyway and brainstorm basically just tells you what you're going to draw in the next two draws so i think of it sort of as like a super cycler um Okay, so C is for Cookie is on Elves. Uh, I'm pretty hopeful that this Syncopate might catch like a Priest of Titania. Hey, look at that. <laughs> so it gets exiled. If that were a Condescend, uh, I would have been able to scry off of the Brainstorm, which would have made the Brainstorm quite a lot better. <laughs> okay oh oops so i ended up skipping some stuff but i drew a forest and i cast the other brainstorm to cycle and i end up finding utopia sprawl electricery <laughs> which is kind of nuts against elves uh this is a good card to have in your main deck it's really strong against the decks that it's strong against and especially if you have Brainstorm, like, if I were playing against Tron, I would have been able to cast Brainstorm, put Electricity on top, and maybe another land, and then draw the land, and then shuffle with Heliod's Pilgrim. Um, okay, so I actually name White with this and I don't want my opponent to think that maybe I have an electricery so I name white and my plan is to go with Heliod's Pilgrim and get like an abundant growth uh, I think that's pretty good I think that's actually uh, good because it's unlikely that I'm going to want to electric read this next turn, although um, maybe I actually do, because this is a lot of mana. <laughs> but if I'm really desperate, there's actually no way I can electric read, so, well. <laughs> oh. A little bit nervous here. But I end up getting Abundant Growth and cycling it. And I get the Ash Barons, which is nice. It gives me something to do with my blue mana. And they cast Lead the Stampede. So they're gonna... I'm just gonna go a little faster. Oh, oops. Huff. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay, but basically they lead the stampede. They hit two one ones, and then they play out a bunch more one ones and a timber watch elf, and then I untap and just immediately electrically because I don't want them to be able to save something with timber watch elf. It probably doesn't matter, to be honest. And then I use the mana on my opponent's turn to ephemerate. And I just draw 
oh, I had the wind Zendikon, so I'm like, okay, I could go for the combo. Yeah, this deck doesn't play a lot of interaction, but I think a couple of high upside interaction spells are pretty good. So this is the Zendikon combo. I actually like this a little bit better than the Arbor Elf because it takes less time. With Arbor Elf, you have to tap the Arbor Elf to untap the land and then tap the land for mana and then click on the freed enchantment to untap it and then uh, it's extra clicks. With this, you just click on this and then you click on this. It's lightning fast. <coughs> In fact, with the old Core Sky Fisher version of the deck, a lot of times I would just pick up my Freed and then put it on a Winds and the Con land to save time. So I actually make infinite mana. And I could play Abundant Growth. I have infinite mana in all colors. I'm not sure why I didn't play Abundant Growth there. But I think they also just had like one card in their hand, so uh, it's unlikely they're going to kill me. I think what I actually did was I screwed up, because you could see I was making white mana. And I should have actually made extra blue, because you click on this card, but sometimes you accidentally click blue tap enchanted creature, and that uses up your blue mana. So, pretty big misplay. Luckily, it didn't cost us the game. So I play another one of these. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I couldn't make infinite mana because it was white. I forgot. Yeah, I actually enchanted it with white at the very beginning of the game. Um, yeah. So I just had infinite white. But... Uh, Luckily, infinite white is still pretty good, I guess. A lot of people say white is the worst color in Popper. <laughs> so maybe maybe not so good, but I did draw Utopia Sprawl, so I have infinite all colors now. <coughs> so I play Cast Deep Analysis. I play Arbor Elf to show my opponent that I have no fear of of uh, their elf synergies. And I kill Timberwatch Elf, and I play Weather the Storm and gain a bunch of life. And I can't actually infinite here. So I just attack for two. But I, I feel like they probably don't have a way to really interact. And I draw Mold Drifter, which is perfect. It goes well with my snap. If I was truly desperate to combo off last turn, I could have snapped my Heliod's Pilgrim and fetched up Abundant Growth. So I draw another Deep Analysis, which is perfect. This is why you put the card in the deck, because it just draws four cards. And then I Rolling Thunder them out of the game. Yeah. All right, so that's why you put Electric Re in the main deck, and especially when you have four copies of Brainstorm, because sometimes you just walk into wins against these sorts of decks. So this hand is a pretty easy keep. I don't have any creatures. I didn't have this Mold Drifter. And sideboarding, I side in my other Electric Re, my Gut Shot, um... I forget what other cards in my sideboard, but I side out the syncopates because usually they're going to have a lot of mana. I don't think Lone Missionary is that good. 
simply because they're going to be uh, you know for life isn't going to matter that much and I feel like if they're beating me lone missionary might like buy me a turn but uh, I would rather just destroy their creatures and uh, move forward with my own game plan and with syncopate sometimes they have a lot of mana I think syncopate's worse on the draw so I side them out and I guess I sided in I'm trying to think I had a bunch of removal, hydros, oh well, who cares. Alright, so I named blue, I think. Yeah, I named blue. So they have a Curion Ranger and another Birchlore Rangers, which they don't actually have that much mana, but what they can do is tap these guys for mana and then tap their forest and then pick up their forest, play it again, and then tap these two guys. So the Curion Ranger alone by itself represents like two or three extra mana, I think. So I want to try and kill that guy. So I think what I do here is I brainstorm looking for a land and then I cast Abundant Growth and Immolation on the Curion Ranger. Oh no, I cast Abundant Growth first. I guess this land is, or this hand is pretty dead if I don't find the land. And Immolation is always gonna be good. So I guess that was my reasoning. Okay, so luckily we do end up finding a land. I put back some cards. I can't shuffle, but all my cards are good, so it doesn't really matter. Also, I have this Witching Well, so I can brainstorm Witching Well next turn. So they cast Lead the Stampede. They get some good hits off it. And they have a Priest of Titania. So that represents quite a lot of mana. I don't want to allow them to get going with this or with this. Both of these cards together are very strong. So I think I just pop off the Priest almost immediately and I see gut shot which is great um, and also evolving wilds which is both a land drop and a shuffle yeah I spend a lot of time on my brainstorm decisions because I feel like it's such a key card and there's so many decisions you make when you cast a brainstorm So I think I keep the Arbor Elf. I don't like the Winds Endicon very much, so I'm going to try and get rid of that. But I love all my other cards. Three removal spells is great. This card can kill multiple creatures. So I think what I do is I try and set up something like uh, getting two cards or something. Maybe I just fetch. Okay, I just fetch immediately. <coughs> so I can't use this blue mana, but I think that's okay. So I get the Arbor Elf down, and I just got shot there, Priest. Next turn, I'm going to have so much mana. This card's going to be very good. The Rolling Thunder. Yeah, 
Yeah, so they didn't really have a very explosive draw. Um, and they took a little while to get going. And they couldn't interact with my Arbor Elf. So I just make a ton of mana and kill all their guys. So they play Elvis Vanguard and Kurion Ranger. They still have five cards in their hand. And they got their Vanguard just now out of Immolation range. But I have Mold Drifter Ephemerate, so I can gas up too. So tapping my mana much better this time. <laughs> I actually have mana open floating that I can use. So I draw four lands, which not the best, but uh, I'm not too scared of what their board is right now. If they had a Timber Watch Elf, I might be a little more scared, but I could just Immolation it. Um, but luckily they don't, So, and I draw Brainstorm Ashbaron, so I can, you know, get rid of some of these useless lands. So they have another lead, the Stampede, and they get some cards off it. Um, but if I have infinite mana next turn, I can just combo them out. Hmm. Okay, so they just conceded there. Uh, I'm not sure if they actually conceded, but, but yeah, whatever. We were probably going to win anyway. We would have brainstormed, gotten some really, uh, some fresh cards, and then we would have drawn two cards off of the ephemerate coming off rebound. We have a removal spell, and uh, everything's looking good. So that was match two, on to match three.